Hello and welcome back to some more MTG content. Today I'm going to do an arena cube draft. So far the arena cube draft has been pretty fun. Um, they've made a lot of changes since the last time I played it. Like uh, Amonkhet and Kaladesh Remastered have both been added. And I believe Jumpstart uh, was added uh, since the last iteration. At least the last one that I played. So, like the last, the last iteration was like pretty bare bones it was just draft good stuff whereas this feels more like an actual cube albeit like lo uh, quite a bit lower powered than like an mtgo cube at all or cube but but still there's there's a, a lot more a lot more synergistic decks and you can really go deep on archetypes in this one rather than just drafting two two colors with powerful cards um so i've done a few of these um one thing i've noticed is that Aggressive decks are really pre prevalent, like the mono white or red white or mono red decks are, like al almost every other opponent I've been playing against them. So the number one thing you should keep in mind is have a plan for aggro. Um, all right. That being said, I'm looking for looking for build around cards. Um, so Vito is an interesting one. There is a life gain deck in the cube. Also, there's a I think it's a Sanguine Bond. Or it says whenever an opponent loses life, you, you gain life. And then this says whenever they gain life, or whenever you gain life, they lose life. So it creates an infinite loop that just ends the game on the spot. So that's actually pretty fun to draft. Um, see, there's an artifact deck. So Platinum Angel is a consideration. There's also like a reanimator deck that you can draft. Um, I think I'm actually going to go with the Fairy's Tutelage here. Just because I haven't drafted it yet. And I think drafting around it could be pretty fun. Um, and also, it's important to take lands highly. Like if you're if you if you don't have anything exciting in the pack, then then taking a land is definitely just fine. All right, so nothing really that goes with Teferi's tutelage right off the hop. Um, I do I do really like Archfiend of Ifnir. And Teferi's Tutelage actually activates it by let's or making you discard a card. Um, there's there's a bunch of cycling cards, not like an overwhelming amount, but there's enough that that I feel like the Archfiend is pretty supported. Not to mention blue black, like like be, cycling uh, Archfiend and like playing a reanimation spell on is pretty strong. So I think I'm gonna take the Archfiend here. Um, possibly, um. Wheel Gravebreaker Lamia or Lay Claim. I don't think Lay Claim will come around. It's pretty good. It's got cycling. Um, I might, might get Chainer as a deck back. Everything else is pretty unexciting. Just a couple White Weenie cards, a combat trick. The uh, MDFCs are, are pretty good. I've mostly. Like, they're just like basically free lands that are if they're on color, so. Okay. Um, so immediately I'm looking at Blood for Bones, because it's a reanimation spell. Again, cycling Archfiend, and then Blood for Bones and get back would be pretty strong. Uh, Dreadhorde Invasion is pretty good. I don't know how much how, how much I like it in like a blue-black like reanimator deck, just because you, you are losing a life every turn. Um, this is definitely really a lot better in the white-black or black-red sacrifice decks. Um... Yeah, I mean, Supreme Will is a consideration, but I, I don't really like cards like this. Three mana counter spells. Like, it's 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 flexible, so I wouldn't fault anyone for, for looking at it here, but I'm going to take Blood for Bones. Definitely consider the lens as well, just because, like, um, either one of these colors is, is probably a fine splash for, for whatever we end up in here. Grixis or Esper. So there's another reanimation spell in Agadim's Awakening, and it's a MDFC. Uh, commit to Memory is pretty good. Good way to deal with uh, like indestructible cards like Ronus or Hazard, or putting Scarab God away for a turn. Um, I like Exclusion Mage, just decent tempo play. Uh, Waker of Waves is another good. Actually, I think I think Wicker of Waves is the pick here, just because just like Archfiend, you can basically cycle it. 
it's got like kind of like a cycling plus ability almost and then and then it's a good reanimation target for blood for bones um, I like silent departure just because it's keeps your opponent off balance kind of the same way exclusion mage judge does but yeah I think I'm taking weaker waves here and seems like we're looking at uh reanimator potentially still early though might not might not happen um seagate stormcaller this is, seems like a a blue red spells kind of card right now i don't have anything that really works with it so, so i'm thinking either fatal push or traxos i don't have anything that untaps traxos i just think it's very big and and good <laughs> um you could also take like bedevil and possibly look up to pick up lands to splash it uh ether hub it's like a one-time splash it's not very exciting in a in a format that doesn't have other ways to gain energy not really looking for a green white land two colors i'm not i'm just going to take fatal push pack's pretty weak okay so feed the swarms a solid removal spell reconnaissance, reconnaissance mission is a cycling card I'm not sure how often i would even cast it but it works with Archfiend. Um, Siren Storm Tamer is a consideration just because, like, if I'm reanimating important targets, then keeping them protected is is good. But also, you don't want to you don't want to dedicate too many card slots to to that effect. Uh, I do like Vraska a lot. She does some good work and can can get you up on cards. So it's between Feed the Swarm and Vraska here for me. Um, I think I'm going to take Vraska. It's got higher upside, even if I don't end up playing it. Alright, so Merfolk's Secret Keeper. Like, I could mill myself, or I could be on the mill plan still with, like, Teferi's Tutelage. Like, Teferi's Tutelage also is just a win condition in itself. But you do need to be like going turbo mill to really get them, because like uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, ways to get value in graveyards here. I think I'm gonna take Boon of the Wishgiver here. It's good with Archfiend. Cycling for one is really good, and just dra drawing four cards is really good. So okay, um, yeah, I'm taking Godfrey's Gift because this card's very good, and it's just basically. It lets you re keep reanimating things over and over, or not over and over. It, take, it takes the card out of the graveyard, but it's re repeated reanimations anyways. Okay, so... Farika Spawn is... not great. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not excited to take that. I'm going to take the Hinterland Harbor here. It's green source, so I can potentially splash Raska if I get one or two more. Seems like uh, colors are kind of getting cut. So, I mean, I, I am just going to take the land, but I am going to have to consider um, hedging my bets at some point. Still going to take the land. Okay, we got a couple blue cards in the pack here, though. I think I'm going to take Commit to Memory over Silent Departure. Memory seems dangerous to, to even cast, but Commit's a, a decent removal spell. Alright, I'm going to take the Devil. So I've got two lands that let me splash red now. Let's take the red MDFC. Okay. Back to... So, Fetid Pools, Canyon Slough, Slough are, are both decent. Um, I definitely don't mind Glass Pool Mimic. Reanimating and copying one of my guys is pretty good, as well as it just being a land. It's, it's pretty strong. Um, definitely not excited about Seagate Restoration. I don't think I've ever cast this card. I don't think I've ever seen anyone cast the card. I think uh, I'm just going to take Glass Pool Mimic here. Again, it's a, it's a land, 
and can also help me with my game plan. Provided I pick up more creatures, of course. I only have two reanimation targets right now. But I still feel pretty good about this. Yep. Into the Royal would have probably been my next my next uh, priority there. But I like Glass Pool Mimic quite a bit. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to take Thirst for Knowledge. So it's going to draw three and let me discard cards. It's good with Fairy's Tutelage and also being able to put creatures in the graveyard. Um, Fibblethip is a decent two drop that I wouldn't mind getting back. Uh, or Treasure Map. Treasure Map would also be quite good to get back. I do. I definitely need to start prioritizing like early game. Like I said, there's there's so many different, so many people playing aggro decks in this format that you just you need to you need to be ready. You need to have a plan. Okay, so Elspeth's Nightmare is really good. Saga, like the sagas in this format are, I've, I've, or the ones that I've seen anyway have been, been really powerful. Like Elspeth conquers death, death and uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the one that makes you sack a, uh, opponent sack a creature, then discard a card, and then get a creature back. I'm gonna take Elspeth's nightmare here. Um, Rotten Reggie's pretty good. These, again, puts cards in the graveyard. Also, Mindstone is something that I'm considering, but I think Elspeth's Nightmare is going to be great because I mean the third mode is irrelevant too. If I'm milling them and they are able to get value in their graveyard, then I definitely want ways to uh, to get rid of their graveyard. And this is just like a free way that gives me two two relevant two relevant modes beforehand. All right, so. It's a Temple, Blooming Marsh, both lands that I wouldn't mind. Uh, I'm going to take re Reassembling Skeleton here because it's great for Blood for Bones, lets me get on the board early, and just lets me keep re recurring things. And it's it's a great card to discard to like Thirst for Knowledge or to Fairy's Tutelage. It just comes back to the battlefield right away. Oldest Reborn is the saga I was talking about, which I am going to take. Again, it's got two two good relevant mo two re good relevant effects right away, and then the third one is exactly what I want for for my game plan here. Let's me bring back a, a creature, maybe one of theirs even. All right, I'm gonna take Space Godzilla, because I mean, hell yeah, Space Godzilla. Also, it's it's a cycling card that. It fits with my theme of, of cycling creatures to reanimate. Um, Baral's Expertise is also really good. Being able to bounce three of their creatures and cast a four mana spell is really powerful. It's a huge tempo swing. But I'm pretty pretty happy with Space Godzilla. Pretty happy just saying Space Godzilla. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to take this figure. Good cheap removal. Perilous Mirror is, isn't bad either. Uh, I don't mind Neutralize because it has Cycling. I like it a lot more than most other 3 mana counter spells. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think this is an easy chart, of course. I mean, again, Temple of... Another relevant land. The chart, of course, just fits fits with what I'm trying to do here. It's good with Teferi's Tutelage. Puts creatures in the graveyard. You know. Um, okay, so so here I choose have to choose between Into the Royal and Canyon Slough Slough. It's tough. Uh, I'm leaning towards the land though, just because I need I need to keep my options open for for reanimation targets. Really, at this point, working with only five creatures. Three of them are reanimation targets. Just a little, little on the light side. I don't really care about any of these cards, so I'm just going to take the ba Karn's Bastion. I don't think I'll play it, but you never know. Alright, so I'm going to take Hydroid Crisis. It's not a reanimation target, but it's just a good creature. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to take the land. 
I was just going through it in my head, and I don't think I'm necessarily going to have a ton of lands. I'm not really a control deck. I'm getting I'm taking the land. So at this point, I've got enough lands that I can probably splash both Bedevil and Raska. Oh, there's another land. Yeah, you have to escape it. You can't just reanimate it. So, so I, I probably won't play it. All right, so this pack is kind of weak for me. Um, I'm just gonna take on burial rights, and then I'm gonna hope I find a white source. Like even just an incidental white source from from almost anywhere is gonna be good enough. But on burial rights, just two reanimation spells in one. It's really powerful. And if you have a white source, you can just discard it and. You still get value out of it, which is just, it's just great. I'm a big fan. Uh, Helm of the Host is a really mana intensive, but really powerful, especially when you're putting out big creatures with effects. Not a lot going on in this pack either. Uh, Stitcher's Supplier is in a, is definitely um, a consideration here. Smelling myself is, is pretty good. Other than that, though, like, uh, Witching Well is the only other one that I'm really looking at. Skyclave Shade isn't too bad either, but it might come around. I'm going to take St Stitcher Supplier. So I could take another land, or I could take bon God Eternal Bantu. Now, Bantu's not too bad. You can you sacrifice things to draw cards. We can't this isn't really the best deck for it. It's a large creature, but I think I'm I'm just gonna take the land here. Um, yeah. Just really make my mana good for my one green card that I'm splashing. All right, I'm definitely taking Hostage Taker here. This card's absurd. Um, yeah, you get to basically exile one of your opponents. Uh, artifact or creatures, and then you can cast it using any mana, mana of any color. Sublime Epiphany is also really good. If somehow this comes back, then I'll be very happy. But Hostage Shaker is pretty important for me here. Also, something it's just really good to keep rebuying with reanimation spells. Okay, uh, Archfiend's Vessel is quite good. I can play it early. It's good, a good fodder for Blood for Bones. And also... I can return it with Blood for Bones to make a 5-5, five five, which is quite good. Uh, Thrix is interesting. But I'm not super excited about it. It's just a, just a flying creature. Bolus Citadel is also very good, but I don't know about in this necessarily in this deck. Alright, Null Priest of Oblivion is a huge pickup. Spark Double is pretty cool too. Just lets me copy my good stuff. But Null Priest is something that can come down on turn two, and also you can kick it and uh, reanimate a creature, so definitely very happy to see that. So there's a Thirst for Meaning, which is another basically another Thirst for Knowledge, but it says Enchantment instead of Artifact on it. Um, let's see. Uh, right now I have 24 playables, so it's not too bad. Um, I'm considering Plague Crafter as well. It's bad against like token decks, but I've got some some crappy cards that I can pitch to it. Um, I don't think I'm playing any of these cards, but I'll take Knight of the Ebon Legion. Sure, we'll take the the blue creature. Oh, there's a lotus field. I'm not sure lotus field like is necessarily worth it here. It it does make white mana, but I don't, I'm not going to play the other cards anyways. So right, I'll take scattered groves. I'll probably play it. Oh, there's. Sulphur Falls, that's that's free. Alright, uh, wow, Bolus's Citadel came back. I'm still gonna take the land, but...
All right. So I got a lot of lands to cast two spells. So I don't know how to feel about that, but maybe maybe I should play Croxa. Getting double red shouldn't be that hard, right? Yeah, maybe it will. Only got four red sources. Okay, so I only ended up with four creatures. I can cut an island because I have glass pool mimic. We got lots of cycling, so shouldn't have trouble hitting land drops. Niv Mizzet Reborn is definitely not worth putting in there just to just to reanimate. I mean, I kind of want to put more creatures in there just because I have God Pharaoh's gift. But maybe I should just cut God Pharaoh's gift then. Since I've got Umburial Rites, Eldest Reborn, Blood for Bones, and Null Priest to reanimate things. Okay, so I cut the the two fast lands, and then I cut Fatal Push and Boon of the Wishgiver to jam uh Knight of the Ebon Legion and Warkite Marauder in. Because I think War Warkite Marauder is kind of a combo with Urchfiend. If I can turn something into a zero one and then give their whole team minus one minus one counters and can take out any creature. Uh, not to mention it's good to get back with God Pharaoh's Gift because it becomes a 4-4 four, four flying creature with that ability. And Knight of the Ebon Legion is just, just a great one drop. It's a great mana sink later in the game. Great to get back with God Pharaoh's Gift because it's just a 4-4 four, four that has those abilities. Uh, yeah, and let's see, see how the games go.